Today I wanted to talk about something that's really been impacting me a lot lately um, because the city I live in is fucking infested. Um, we're going to be talking about homeless people. Not all homeless people, we're going to be mainly talking about crackheads, okay? There's two types of homeless people. There's homeless people who are like respectable, normal fucking people just in some bad circumstances. Then there's crackheads, and crackheads are a whole nother fucking breed. They have like superpowers. They're the closest thing to Superman that you're going to fucking see. It's like the anti-hero of Superman because instead of like saving children, they're like breaking into your car and shit. The first story takes place, I'm 13 years old, I was riding my longboard, I hit a pebble, boom, bam, broke my fucking wrist, ow. Hey mom, can you take me to the ER please? It's 2 p.m., we hit the ER, we walk in, that building is fucking packed. It's like a fucking DMV office in there, boom, 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 so many fucking people. It took us like 45 minutes even to check in. We sit there for fucking six hours before this lovely gentleman walks in. I never got his name, but I always like to imagine it was like John. He kind of looked like John Redcorn from King of the Hill. Um, it, it also was like the Native American hospital, so most people kind of looked like him there. Except me. I looked white. <laughs> but fucking A. So, John walks in and he immediately has a problem with the amount of people in there. <gasps> It's my turn, but it's my turn. And like the first fucking words he says as he pulls in, he just starts arguing about that it's his fucking turn to go. I'm sitting there with my fucking broken ass arm holding it still crying like, if this motherfucker gets to go before me, I swear to fucking God. I was just not feeling it. I was pissed the fuck off that this dude was coming in there causing a scene as I'm already in pain. Everyone just kind of gives him that look of disgust. Like, I don't know if you've ever like, said something kind of awkward in a public setting and you get those kind of looks like imagine a thousand fucking native americans in a room staring daggers at you fucking staring tomahawks at you fucking imagine that shit it's probably really scary for him probably not actually he's probably fucking used to it it seems like the type of action he was doing after he comes in makes his fucking entrance he sits down on a wall leans up against it drops ass hits the floor bah! It actually kind of sounded like a I said, like, I'll never forget that sound for some reason. I don't know why, but homeboy, homeboy had a wagon. Fucking, he smacks that shit, um, opens up his jacket, pulls out a watermelon for loco. Um, the timeline, the way that it plays out, it wasn't one of the OG ones with caffeine. However, it was still like a 14% alcoholic beverage and this man has just opened it and began drinking it in the emergency room of the free hospital for Native Americans. That is probably gonna go as well as you can imagine. He starts drinking it and just kind of fucking starts reminiscing on old times and decides that we're all his friends now and we wanna hear it too. He starts telling us about Fritz and if he can find Fritz, it'll all be fine. Fritz has the answers. The doctors don't have the answers. The therapists don't have the answers. He doesn't have the answers. You know who fucking does though? Fritz. And he was pissed the fuck off that Fritz wasn't there to solve his problem, whatever the fuck it was, honestly. Unfortunately for me, right when it was getting good, that's when I get called to the back. Boom, bam, in like 15 minutes, they toss a sling on me, come back in a week to get your fucking cast, you know? It, I mean, it was the free Native American hospital. We think they're gonna fucking put a cast on same day. <laughs> anyway, so <laughs> as I'm walking out of the ER room, I look to the right and I see four security guards mobbing up to this dude, mobbing right on up to him. Also, he now has a second Four loco sitting next to him, which I always thought was super badass. <laughs> so the last thing I hear as I'm walking out of the office of the ER is, where's Fritz? fucking a dude i'm asking myself the same thing to this day where the fuck is fritz if you find him let me know this next story takes place when i was working overnights in a gas station that was in a pretty not good part of town to kind of give you an example of how not good it was for overnights we locked the doors and everything was through a pass-through window so anytime someone wanted something like i want some fucking gummy worms i go run and grab them that's what I did. It was it was honestly a really great job. It was a lot of fun. The worst part was dealing with these motherfuckers. Let's talk about it. This story is super fun because it features a super marginalized 
group of society. I'm so fucking inclusive, boys. It was a female crackhead. Mm, I know what you're thinking. Uh, you're fucking weird. So basically, I'm outside smoking a cigarette because to be real, in between customers, I was just kind of chilling outside smoking cigarettes, listening to podcasts and stuff. That's kind of how I spent my nights. I'm out there smoking and I can smell this lady and I hear some rustling on the side of the building. I can smell her though. I, I can smell a piss soaked human or approaching. So I look around and I see her mobbing up ever so slowly. Sir, can, can I have a cigarette? Normally, I'm willing to give people a cigarette. I know what it's like to not have one. But I'm not trying to get anywhere near this piss bitch. No, ma'am, I'm sorry, it's my last one. Well, fuck you then! She immediately fucking blows up, immediate. Fuck you! I just want a fucking cigarette! I just want a fucking cigarette! Like, she just kind of kept going in, going in. I'll show you my titties! I'll show you my pussy! Like, she, bruh, like, honestly, if I was a fucking pervert, it would have been a field day for me. Um, <laughs> as soon as she started saying that, I just let her know, like, no, ma'am, I'm, I'm really not interested in that. Like, please, like, just leave. I don't want to call the cops at this point. You're sexually harassing me. Like, you're, you're making me really uncomfortable, ma'am. Sexually harassing you? You're probably one of those F slurs. Anyway, I can tell you don't like any pussy. At this point, I was just kind of losing my shit, so I just decided, fuck it, I'm just going to yell at this bitch. I told her, ma'am. I fucking love pussy. I just don't want anything to do with your stinky piss ass. At this point, she evolved or devolved. I'm not necessarily sure where on the skill tree it would go, but she turned into a fucking pterodactyl. That, that was kind of the vibe she was given for a little bit. Um, I was just kind of letting her go off. You know, I'm like, fuck it. If she doesn't leave in 10 minutes, I'll call the cops. I go inside, lock the door, open up the pass-through window, just start going, please leave. I don't want to do this paperwork bullshit. I fucking hate cops. I don't want to call them. Please leave. She didn't get the fucking hint. So I pull out the phone, fake dial 911, oldest trick in the book. And I've never seen a fucking crackhead get out of there so fast. She started here, ended here no time fucking passed. She teleported. I don't understand how crackheads gain these superpowers, but she apparently gained the power of teleportation from the fucking crackhead factory that produced her. It was pretty wild. That's the story of the time I got sexually harassed by a female crackhead. The last story I'm gonna tell today is a super special one because I'm the crackhead in the story. Let's talk about it. So, I was doing my normal routine at the time, 18 years old, a fresh 18 eating a ton of Benadryl. I was addicted to Benadryl at the time. So I was probably on like six, 700 milligrams. That was kind of my usual daily dose, daily dose of the Bennies. So I pop them bitches and then I run out of cigarettes. I don't know if any of y'all are a smoker, but that's a big fucking problem. Running out of cigarettes sucks. Then I realize I have a couple dollars and change. I probably have enough to get some rolly cigarettes from the smoke shop down the street. Boom, bam. I'm a fucking genius. I kind of forgot that I took the Benadryl though. So I get dressed, put on a thick jacket. It's November, it's kind of cold outside. And I head on my way. It's like a fucking half mile. And I'm tripping on Benadryl, bro. Like I should have, I could have and probably should have died that day. Like what the fuck? Anyway, anyway. I fucking walk over there and I didn't have to carry a wallet at the time because I was a fucking drug addict. I was not responsible at all. So I'm walking around with my change and my thing, holding it like this. This is kind of how I'm walking. You know, I'm just kind of holding my change in my thing. I'm not street smart. So when I walked in the building, gripping the inside of my jacket pocket, I didn't realize it looks like I'm about to fucking commit an armed robbery. So I walk in that bitch, walk right up to the counter, still holding this, tripping balls. So I'm just like, yeah, I want the American spirit menthol rolling tobacco in the cheapest paper, please. She looks at me, looks down at my like, at whatever the fuck this is, the pocket, stares at me. Sir, what are you grabbing? Ma'am, I just fucking said, get me the cigarettes, come on. And I throw the change on the table. Now, normally, I'm not mean to customer service people. 
I fuck past me. Past me was a huge asshole. That was like one of the shittiest things I've ever done. So I'm sorry, lady, for scaring you that I almost robbed you and then being a Karen at the same time. Uh, but yeah, so that's the story of me being a fucking crackhead. Have a good day, guys.